In this video, I'm going to work through an individual trig limit here. Before we get started on this one, I am going to point out that there are some things throughout the problem that I'm going to be using. A couple properties of limits here. The limit as x approaches 0 of sine x over x is 1, and we will use that. In working out this problem, we will also use the one where the limit as x approaches 0 of 1 minus cosine x over x squared is a half. So two very um, good properties to know for your limits. And then we're also going to be doing a substitution that's going to involve a double angle formula. Um, all of your double angle formulas, your trig identities, things of that nature um, are going to be very helpful when doing trig limits. So cosine 2x is equal to cosine squared x minus sine squared x. All right, so when I go to work out this uh, trig limit, the first thing that I am going to do is I am going to do a direct substitution because you should always do a direct substitution first to make sure that you have that indeterminate form before you start doing the algebra manipulation. So if I plug in 0 here, I'm going to have cosine of 0 minus cosine 2 times 0 would be 0 all over 0 squared. Well, anything time, uh, minus itself is going to give us a 0 on top there and a 0 on the bottom. So I do have that indeterminate form of 0 over 0. All right, so what I'm going to do first off, um, I am going to notice that I've got a cosine 2x there, and my other cosine over here is an x, and so I'm going to want to change this out so that I don't have a 2x right there. So that's where this double angle formula is going to come into play. So I'm going to have the limit as x approaches 0, cosine x minus. Now, I'm minusing one term here. I'm going to be putting two terms in here, so it's really important that you don't forget to put those um, parentheses around this cosine squared x minus sine squared x, and then all over that x squared. Okay, in the next line, I think I'm just going to go ahead and distribute that out so that we can see what this is going to look like um, with our signs distributed here. So we'll see if I can squeeze it on here. The limit as x approaches 0, I'll have a cosine x and then minus... Uh, cosine squared x and then minus times a minus there will give me a plus on my sine squared x and then all over that x squared. Okay, now from here I'm going to take this expression and attempt to break it up into uh, two separate equations here. I've got uh, two of these sine x's and I've got an x squared here. That's going to give me an opportunity to have two of those. All right, and then this expression over here, if I play around with it, um, I'm going to be able to manipulate it to get something to be this as well. So let's uh, break this up into the limit as x approaches 0. We'll put those first two terms together. So we'll go cosine x minus cosine squared x and then all over x squared plus the remaining term there, sine of um, squared x over x squared. And I almost didn't write that big enough to make it look like it's sine squared. So let's fix that so that it actually looks like it. Okay, so sine squared x. There we go, that looks a little bit better there. Okay, now, um, whenever you take a single fraction, you break it up into two separate fractions, you always ought to check your work. Can I add these two fractions and get this original expression back? And I can, because when you add like denominators, you need that common denominator. Okay, now, from this one right here, I'm going to factor out a cosine x. That's going to get me a 1 right there, and I'm getting closer to this. All right, and then on this, I'm just going to break it up into um, possibly two limits, and I may not do it yet in this step, but I'm going to break this up into two sine x over x eventually. So we'll have the limit as x approaches 0. Let's factoring that cosine x out. That would leave me with a 1 in the first term and then a cosine x in that second term all over x squared. And then let's go ahead and leave it in this line, sine squared x all over x squared. All right, now I'm going to break these up into two individual limits, taking the limit of both of them and then separating this up so that I have this formula and separating this so that I have two of those formulas. So then I'm going to have the limit as x approaches 0. All right, splitting this up then, I'll have a cosine x times the 1 minus cosine x over x squared, which is what we want there because it's going to match our formula. 
All right, and then plus, we'll take the limit of the other one. Limit as x approaches zero. Now, just splitting this up here into sine x over x times sine x over x. All right, that's gonna then give me that limit right there. So on this one, I'm gonna be doing a direct substitution. This is our formula, this is a formula, and this is a formula. So doing a direct substitution here, cosine of zero. Let's go ahead and actually show that line. Cosine of zero times, we know this limit is one half, plus the limit here we know is one times one. Okay, cosine of zero is gonna be one. So then I'm gonna have one times one half plus a one times one. So that's gonna be one times one half, which is just gonna give me a one half plus one times one, it's just gonna give me a one, which is gonna give me an overall limit of three halves. So, um, quite a lot of steps there, but definitely showing all the algebra steps so that in case you have to justify that answer, then you've got the algebra steps that you need for that. Um, definitely, you gotta use properties of your limits, and then you're gonna have to know your trig substitutions, you know, anything that might need to be substituted there. Definitely, thanks for watching. If the videos are helping, uh, please share with your friends, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Thanks.